Hello everyone, welcome to another video from my YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be talking about project schedule network diagrams. In this video, you will learn what is a project network diagram, how to prepare one, how to get the critical path of a project, how to calculate the floats in a project, and everything related to that. So in first, let's see what a project schedule network diagram is. A network diagram is a graphical representation of your project schedule. It enables the project managers, the project management team, and the project team to visualize the activities that are necessary to be completed over the duration of the project. In a network diagram, the activities, their durations, their relationships with other activities are shown. As you can see, I have written in bold here the types of relationships between activities, which is start to finish, finish to start, start to start, and finish to finish. We will prepare a different video for this specific topic, but in this video, it will suffice that you understand that there are four different types of relationships between activities. The project network diagram could be shown in two ways. The first one is activity on arrow or AOA and the second one is activity on node or AON. An activity on arrow which is not used so much these days, the activities are written down on the arrows and the length of the arrow shows the duration of each activities and the circles here are called the nodes this is where an activity starts and this is where an activity ends and so on an activity on node the activity and their related information are shown in the nodes as you can see here, activity A is shown in node A and B and C and D. The length of the arrow has nothing to do with the duration of the activity. It only represents the relationship between the two activities. The precedence diagramming method, or PDM, this is used to graphically represent our project schedules. In this video, I will teach you how to carry out a PDM. To better understand the PDM, you should have knowledge of free float, total float, and critical path. As you can see in the definition of the free float, it's the amount of time that you can delay a specific activity without delaying the, predecessor, the successor activity. There are two types of activities, successor and predecessor. Successor activity is the activity after the specific activity, and predecessor activity is the activity which, which, uh, which is before the, the activity. Total float is the amount of time you can delay an activity without delaying the total project time. And critical path is the longest duration of the project is the longest path on the project network diagram and it is the shortest time possible that you can complete a project in. In PDM we show each activity in each node this way. We have the activity name or identifier or ID. We have the early start, the earliest possible we can start the activity. We have the earliest finish it's the earliest that we can finish the activity. We have the duration in the middle here. We have the late start, which means that the activity could be started no later than this date. We have the late finish, and we have the float here. And there is the formula for the float. How do we calculate the float? It's late finish minus early finish, or late start minus early start. Uh, the early finishes calculated by adding the values of duration plus the value of early start. 
In the next slide here, we have an example in which we'll, we will learn how to prepare a network diagram and how to do the basic calculations required for the network diagram. As you can see in the example, a table is given and for the table they have asked for the activities shown in the table, find the following. First, draw the project network diagram. Second, calculate the total duration of the project. And third, calculate floats of activities of each activity and find the critical path of the project. So let's go step by step how it is done. In the, in the first question, they have asked us for the schedule network diagram. In order to have the, the, the full picture, I have left the table to be here so you can see and understand what I'm doing. First, we have activity A. So as we, as we represented in here, we will draw each activity to have these details in it. So as you can see, I'm drawing activity A, and then we have activity B. As you can see, activity A has no predecessor, which means that there is no activity before activity A. And activity B's predecessor is activity A. So we connect these two activities. Next, we come to activity C, as you can see, the predecessors for activity C are A and B, so we connect it to both B and A. Next, we have activity D. The predecessor for activity D is activity C, so we, so we connect it to activity C. And then we have activity E. As you can see, activity E's predecessor is activity A, so we connect it to activity A. Then we have activity F which predecessors are activity D and E, so we connect it to D and E. So e, here we have the network diagram for our project. The next question is, what's total duration of the project? In order to do it, we should do a forward analysis. How is the forward analysis done? So let's see. We have activity A, as you can see, we have the duration in the middle, the early start, which is day zero, from the day that the project begins. So early start plus duration of the activity equals to early finish of the activity. Next, as we had in our project network diagram, was activity B. Activity B is connected to activity A because activity A is the predecessor of activity B. So the duration for activity B was three. The earliest that activity B can start is the earliest that activity A can finish. So the early start of activity B will be two, which will be added to its duration, and we will have the early finish of activity, which will be five. Then we have activity C. Activity C's predecessors, as we can see here, are activity A and B, so we will connect it to both A and B. And the earliest we can start activity C is when both activity A and B are finished. Activity A ends on the second day, activity B ends on the fifth day. So since both of them needs to be finished, we have to uh, write down the early start as five, the early finish of activity B. 5 is added to 1, the duration of activity C, and we have 6, the early finish of activity C in here. Next, we have activity D. As you can see, the uh, activity D has its predecessor activity C. The duration of activity D is 5 days. The earliest we can start is 6th uh, day of the project, and which will be added to its duration, and early finish will be activity uh, will be 11 days. Same could be done for rest of the, the, the activities in the project. As you can see, activity A, which predecessor is only activity A. So activity A ends in the second day. This could be started on the second day, after the second day, and which will be added to its duration, and the early finish of activity E will be day nine. Next, we have activity F. As you can see, activity F has two predecessors, activity D and E. 
Activity D must be completed, activity E must be completed in order to start activity F. So in here, as we can see, activity D and E are linked to activity F. So from here, the total duration of the project, as we can see here, is the end date of activity F, which is the 14th day. So the total duration will be 14 time units or days or whatever you have assigned here. So the second part of the question is solved. Let's go to the third part. Calculate the floats of activities. So in the previous slide, we did a forward analysis. We, we found the early starts and early finishes. To obtain the floats, we should do a backward analysis in which we will find the late finish and late start of each activity. How is that done? Let's see. Activity F, as we had from the previous slide, the early finish of activity F will be 14 and the early start will be 11. So, as we know, the activity cannot be delayed more than this date, more than 14 days. So, the early finish will be 14. So, when we uh, minus the duration of the activity, the early start will be 11. Let's go to activity E, which is a predecessor for this activity. And the, uh, the late finish of activity E will be 11. If we minus the duration of this activity, the early start of the activity will be 4. Same could be done for another activity, activity D. The early start, uh, finish was 11. The late finish should always be 11 because you cannot delay it more than this. If you delay it, you will delay the activity F. Same could be done for activity C. Activity C's late finish is this activity's late start, which is 6. If you minus the duration, it will give you the late start of the activity. Same could be done for other activities, as you can see here. So, let's calculate the floats of, float of each activity. For the formula in float, we said that float equals to late finish minus early finish or late start minus early start. Whatever we do here, this will be zero. It will be zero for this activity, zero for this activity, zero for this activity, and zero for activity A. Only for activity E, the late finish minus the late the late finish minus late minus early finish will be two. So this is the float, which means that you can delay this activity by two days without delaying the project or without delaying its successor activity, which is activity F. For your information, the path that has zero float is the critical path. As you can see in the next slide, we are going to find the critical path. It's shown in the red arrows here. And it's activity A, B, C, D, E. So there might be a question that why don't we go through path A, C, D, and E as our critical path? As you can see, the late finish of activity A is 2, the late start of activity C is 5, which means that there is room available for delay. But if you go through this path, there is no room available to delay any activity. If you delay one, you will delay your whole project. As you can see, the critical path is the root A, B, C, D, and E. Thank you for watching this video. If the contents in this video were helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. Thank you very much.